Okay, well, hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning back into the Black Box podcast. Today, we're going to be sort of examining sort of um, another personal vlog segment. And one of the things that I had uh, been doing this year is, for the first time, I really became very interested in the sort of scholarly approach to people who analyze conspiracy theories. Not only to the ones that promote um, the 9-11 truth, there's a whole movement of scholars for 9-11, and that's the name of their group. There's also a lot of scholarly work done on the Kennedy assassination, but I was really interested in more of the opposite side the critics of conspiracy theories, if you will. And I'm going to be looking at three sort of examples now, um, three individuals, uh, Michael Barkin, Daniel Pipes, and Michael Shermer. Each one of them has a book out on the subject, and they're all the authors of many different books. You know, they're very, very fast and prolific writers. And I was really sort of fascinated by reading a review of Michael Barkin's A Culture of Conspiracy, and it was hailed as a classic of, you know, literature, like something that, you know, experts are going to look to when they're trying to understand the concept of the conspiracy theorist. And I just found it completely watered down, completely oversimplified and I don't know how anyone could call it a classic and you can watch the video clips of Michael Barkin online and you can also see him on C-SPAN Book TV promoting the book and trying to give a large presentation on it and it's so boring he has such a fascinating subject but done in such a boring way and um, the other one I thought the after, you know, that, I was looking directly toward Daniel Pipes and his book, Conspiracy. Daniel Pipes is also a very sort of, um, very involved political commentator, and he has written other books as well. He is more of a Middle East historian, and he calls himself an intellectual historian, the history of ideas, and his is a little better. It's better because it's sort of, um, easier to follow, and... It definitely gets to more of the interesting subject matter and talking about sort of what are conspiracies versus counter-conspiracies and sort of historical individuals such as Lenin and Hitler who were conspiracy theorists themselves and launched counter-conspiracies. That's a little more interesting. And um, lastly, uh, Michael Shermer was the author of Why People Believe Weird Things and Don't even quote me on that, because it's been a long time. I had to read that book about, oh, about ten years ago. Yeah, nine or ten years ago. It was actually recommended in a college class, but as somebody just said, you know, I loaned the book to somebody, it's like, he takes such an interesting subject and he makes it boring. And Michael Shermer is, of course, also also the author of Skeptic Magazine. (laughs) Did I say author? He is the editor of Skeptic Magazine, and he is a Holocaust historian. So he's uh, very big on being very critical of anything that is sort of... Anything that you might be interested in, he's critical of it, let's say that. And one of the biggest reasons why I'm sort of choosing to do this subject for an upload is... These people are covering this subject, and I just don't feel like there's enough. I feel like I want more. I feel like I want to just know more, and I want someone to say something else, you know? Like, why isn't there a larger discussion on sort of, like, the mechanics of conspiracy theories? Why aren't more people talking about how conspiracy theories are formed, or just who are the people behind it? And why isn't there a more interesting way to present this information? Daniel Pipes might not be the most interesting individual in the world, but his book was a little more Uh, Definitely a more of a page-turner than the other two individuals mentioned. And, you know, like, I'm almost even tempted to write one myself, you know. It's like, that'd be sort of like a a year-long project, at least one year, two years, three years. But really, the reason why we want to look at this subject is, firstly, is there any truth to what people are saying? And is there any way that we can... um, learn more about this, and 
are these theories that are actually justifiable, and what is the role of the government? Are they just trying to suppress all forms of thought that criticize the government? Maybe, maybe. That's not 1984 yet, you know, that's a very possible thing, and when you do hear things like the CIA is manipulating sort of historical research, that they are paying scholars and professors to write false information in their textbooks that is going to um, sort of change the course of human thought for decades to come to hide the wrongdoings of the CIA and the American government and the uh, politicians. Doesn't that really just sort of deserve a little more attention? But furthermore, I think it's also very fascinating to study the individuals that are making these claims. Like, well, who is this person? Where did they come from? Why did they um, choose this subject, and how did they get here? Because it's very interesting to learn about the connection between the historian and how they learned to study history, or the connection between the journalist and why they are writing on this subject. It's always fascinating to learn about how does this person connect to their subject material. I find it's very human and it's just very eye-opening in a lot of ways. Um, I, I did come across the one possibility that Michael Barkin's work might be hailed as a classic just because it is sort of, um, the government might benefit from it. I don't necessarily think that there is absolutely no truth to any of these theories, so I think the government just might benefit from that and sort of they've encouraged people to um, overemphasize that this is a sort of reputable work, but I think we need more. And it would be very interesting for someone to create a new book on just sort of what are conspiracy theories, how do they form, and... I tried to do an upload on the uh, Black Box Radio channel called True Conspiracy Theories, and that was sort of a five-minute spiel about the subject. It wasn't really the length of, um, or the amount of material necessary for creating a book on conspiracy theories, but there is enough material out there. Um, I'm very tempted to write one. It's just uh, by uh, December, I'm going to have the sort of next plan for my next book in order and we're going to begin some work on that and you know I'm still debating over a few ideas and one of them is to just you know as I said just write a book on conspiracy theories another is a sort of novel that I'm actually been planning for a while but I would like to really try and focus on one or the maximum of two writing projects at once and there were a few true crime cases that really, really caught my eye that I was very fascinated with and I just wanted to write more about. And I'm going to have a couple uploads on each of those on the Black Box Radio channel very soon. And for the most part, this channel is a true crime channel. Just sort of um, expressing some video vlog feelings today. So back to the whole conspiracy things with Daniel Pipes and Michael Shermer and uh, Michael Barkin. Michael Shermer's work as a Holocaust historian and a skeptic is received a lot of negative backlash from the internet communities because he is really only taking the stance that nothing is possible, there's nothing there. And that is not really something that a skeptic should do. A skeptic, and the editor of Skeptic Magazine, should not say that there is nothing there. They should be just saying what a skeptic is all about. Where is the proof? I'm not saying it's impossible, just I'll, I'll accept it when you show me the proof. And I don't really find that sort of mentality coming from Michael Shermer. He really feels like someone who has uh, made up his mind on everything and is very close-minded and not open to new information and not open to new opinions. This is a man who had a chance to interview the um, alleged alien UFO abductee Travis Walton on the show The Moment of Truth and he had the chance to ask him one question and he said, you claim you've been on a UFO and you were abducted by aliens. Do you have any evidence of that? And it's like, that's the question that you're going to ask somebody? If you could ask them one question, do you have any evidence? Of course he has evidence. As he has said by his own admission, um, Geiger counter readings are evidence, and even the fact that he's on a television show on a lie detector 
taking a lie detector test, I mean, that's evidence as well. It's not 100% proof, but passing a lie detector test in the past is evidence. It's not proof yet. But um, there are also many other things, such as... Um, but anyway, it's not about UFOs. That's not really the focus of today's subject, and I can go on rambling on about Michael Shermer and his views on aliens for endless amounts of time. The other thing to keep in mind is when you look at guys like Pipes and Shermer and Barkin is when they take this sort of narrow-minded approach and saying that conspiracy theories aren't really valid and that they aren't really analyzing the information properly, that becomes an assumption in itself. And that's why I thought it was very interesting that Daniel Pipes mentioned the sort of historical counter-conspiracies and that really shows you that over time, even mentioning guys like Lenin and Hitler, who were conspiracy theories themselves and launched their own conspiracy theories, and launched their own counter-conspiracies, you know, they created this sort of secret plan, you know, working behind the scenes, usually for a malicious plot. Well, those are real. And there also is a lot of other ways that we can look at this throughout the course of time. There are going to be more. You know, if those two examples happen, they're going to be more, especially when it comes, you know, to political figures trying to hide their wrongdoings, especially when it comes to administrative figures, even in law enforcement, trying to hide their wrongdoings. So many times when we have true crime and a case goes unsolved, it's because the police made critical errors in the investigation, and they're trying to use their administrative power to cover it up. And that would be one of the things that I would really like to explore if I wrote a book about that. Um, conspiracy theories relating all the way down to law enforcement. Like starting at the top with the president and the military and then looking at conspiracy theories by the American uh, corporate system all the way down to law enforcement and the local police departments. What were sort of like all of these people doing for malicious reasons, and how are they using their sort of sense of power to cover it up? And we see this in a much broader scale with things like the CIA, with things like Henry Kissinger when you know, the Vietnam War, and it's like we have so much material now about what is going on with um, these sort of mainstream figures in government or the CIA frontline did a very um, famous piece called Guns, Drugs, and the CIA, all about the arms and the war on drugs that was sort of falsified and fabricated so that the CIA could put people in jail and further the prison industrial complex. And it's all recorded and investigated, and people know about it. And I mean, that also is a conspiracy theory that turned out to be true. The whole CIA plotting the war on drugs thing and the school-to-prison pipeline and things such as that. So it's very, um, very, very overlooked and underreported. And that would be one of the first things that I would do in a book is just go from things like that, the CIA and the military, Let's go all the way down to law enforcement. Let's look at some key critical examples of how somebody in a police station, you know, messed up an investigation and used their administrative powers to hide the evidence. And then this case has gone unsolved for endless amounts of time. And hopefully they will never want the case to be solved because then it would expose critical errors in the police department and their work. And we find this all the time when we're looking at true crime cases on the internet, and you're just really sort of noticing suspicious behavior from the local police departments and how they handled the investigation. And I think all of that's very nice, and um, it's a very nice subject to explore. And I felt the work of Pipes, Barkin, and Shermer was not enough. And if anyone has any more conspiracy theory books to recommend or any other conspiracy theory analysis on YouTube, um, I would love to hear more. Please recommend anything. Just send me anything at all. I would love to hear more and <sighs> stay in touch.